Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today we are going to be doing a vlog. And that vlog is one that I'm terrified for, to be quite honest. We are doing our reread for the Twilight Saga. If you didn't know, Twilight came out in 2005. And in 2005, how old was I? I can't do mental math, let me get my calculator. <laughs> I was eight? I was eight when Twilight came out, okay? So I've been a Twilight stan since I was eight years old. Um, that's terrifying. What the hell? <laughs> I was the Twilight fan. I had a Edward Cullen cardboard cutout in my room growing up. Um, it was terrifying and I loved him with all my heart. But yeah, I mean, I'm really scared to reread these. It's funny because like months and months ago, I told Caleb, I was like, for some reason, I'm getting the hankering to reread Twilight. But I also told him that I was scared to reread it because I have such fond memories about it because it was a big part of my childhood and like, that series really got me into reading. <laughs> and he said, yeah, maybe you should just leave it in the past and like let it be that fond, happy memory that it is. And I was like, yeah, you right. And then Midnight Sun was announced. So then I was like, ha, no, we're doing it. <laughs> so I got my post tabs here, I'm ready to go. I ordered a bunch of these in bulk, so we got a bunch on backup in case I am really feeling some type of way because of this book. I did start a Goodreads like group community thing um, with a page for this read-along that like I was hosting but then with everything that started happening in the world in like the past two months obviously this all like took a, a back seat and it really wasn't my priority at all there were many more things that was more important to be doing and more important to be reading so this was taking a back seat but right now it is June 24th um, by now I kind of wanted to have the first two books of the saga already reread but here we are. I'm not upset about it because all the things that I read this month were very good and important and I don't regret anything. So here we go. We're just gonna start reading and I will fill you in when I have thoughts and I'm sure there will be many. <laughs> Okay, hey guys, just a couple quick immediate thoughts to get off my chest. Um, it's really kind of enjoyable to be back in this world and reliving this time of my life when I first read this. Right in the beginning, Bella is obviously just being a brat and being mean to Charlie, which I don't appreciate. We love Charlie in this house. And of course we had the classic lunchroom scene where she sees Edward and the other Cullens for the first time. And I know it's gonna continue, but it's really amusing seeing some things and realizing how they obviously went over my head as a kid. Um, like it's talking about how Charlie is a patrol officer or a chief, the police chief, I think. And it says, when I came here as a child, Forks, Washington, he would always remove the bullets from his gun as soon as he walked in the door. I guess he considered me old enough now not to shoot myself by accident and not depressed enough to shoot myself on purpose. Like, dang, I was eight years old and I was reading that? Like, obviously I didn't pick up on it. Or maybe it did and it, and it subconsciously planted itself in my mind to come back in my later teen years because those were fun times. Mental health is important, friends. Okay, hi. It has been about 200 pages since I last checked in. So let's go through what has happened. I have started orange tabbing all the times that Edward is abusive and toxic. There are quite a few of those. Purple tabbing things where kind of creepy or um, questionable, I guess. <laughs> Editing Sydney really quick. Going back and realizing how much I loved Edward and how much I loved Edward and Bella together the first time I read this book. Obviously in that time of my life and at that age that I was while well reading this, I did not realize the problematic natures and the toxicity and the borderline abusive things that happened between Edward and Bella, predominantly Edward to Bella. I'm wondering if that kind of set the tone for many of my relationships growing up, obviously before Caleb, because Caleb is an angel and I love him with all my heart. However, before Caleb, I made some pretty bad choices. <laughs> and I'm wondering if this book ruined how I saw relationships and how they should be. <laughs> 
because I loved Edward, and obviously growing up, I was also attracted to other people that had similar qualities to Edward. <laughs> and I'm just now seeing the connection, and I am not happy about it. Okay, crisis over. We can move on. <laughs> Blue tabbing parts where Bella is an idiot or not consistent in the rest of her character writing. And then one pink tab so far, which is, I was just like appalled at that part of the book. I'll get there. Hold on. Let me talk about things. So since the last time we spoke, I was on page like 75. And at that point, I was happy that even though Bella's obsession with Edward had only begun, I was appreciating that she was at least calling herself out. She was saying like, I know this is crazy. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Your whole day and life and thoughts are revolving around this one person that you don't even know. Let me just talk about how I wish they gave Bella a little bit more personality. Um, she's just the most bland character. I don't know if that was like the point, but like literally they were at the beach for this party with all of her friends who aren't vampires. And this is also the beach that we met Jacob Black for the first time in the book and that made me really happy. But before that happened, they were like setting up the fire and Mike, he lit the flames of the driftwood fire and he goes, you'll like it, watch the colors. And literally all Bella said, she looked at the flames and it was probably really pretty. And she goes, it's blue. Period. That's it. Nothing like, oh, like, that's cool. Like, I wonder how it does. Like, no conversation. It was just, it's blue. Like, <laughs> a little more conversation would be nice. A little sustenance. A little personality, please. Thank you. And then on page 127, when she was trying to get information out of Jacob about the Cullens and why they don't come to the beach or whatever. And she was like flirting with Jacob and like being all like kind of seductive. And I was like, this doesn't sound like something Bella would do. Like, I just can't picture Bella Swan flirting, especially at this point in the book. Like before that sentence, before this situation of her flirting with Jacob Black, there was no indication that she had the balls to flirt. You know what I mean? She's been very standoffish and quiet and now she's like winking and like, I was like, no, I don't like this. <laughs> and also all of the times that Edward has been like warning Bella to get away from him and like stay away because he's dangerous blah, 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 blah. But like sometimes he also does sound like threatening and scary. I mean, which he is, I mean, he's a vampire. But like when they were talking about like when her number was up, like, you know, to die, she was like, do you think that maybe my number was up the first time with the van that you've been interfering with fate because he saved her from the van. We remember this. And he said, that wasn't the first time your number was up. Your number was up the first time I met you. <laughs> and then Bella goes to Port Angeles with, what is it, Jessica and, Angela? I think so. It's the scene where she, where she leaves to go to a bookstore while they go to the port and she almost gets sexually assaulted by these four men, but obviously Edward comes and saves her life because she is a damsel in distress and, and she's just so clumsy. She just always needs help. But then he takes her out to dinner. I don't know if I missed something. I don't think I did. But at this dinner is when Edward is telling Bella about his ability to read minds. And she is just like taking it in stride. She's just like, yeah, this is just another thing. If someone was telling me that they could read everyone's mind, except for mine, and like it was true, I would be shitting. I would be like, what? Like, how is this a thing? How does this happen? What is, what is going on? But no, she was just kind of like, and accepting it. I would be asking questions, I don't know. It was just blowing my mind how casual and not weirded out or anything she was by it. And then on the way home from said dinner, they have like an hour in the car together, probably like a half hour because he drives so terrifyingly fast. Bella's asking Edward more questions because now they have like a silent agreement that they both know that he's a vampire but they never really talked about it until this moment. So now she's just asking him questions about being a vampire and he's just answering them. And again, I would be shitting. I'd be like, I'm in a car with a vampire who I thought was like a fairy tale or folklore, something. But no, this is real life. I have a vampire sitting right next to me. I'd be scared, at least a little bit. And she is just like chilling. She's just chilling. I feel like the way that they went about like him being a vampire was the way that me and Caleb went about dating. So me and Caleb, we never had the conversation of like, hey, do you wanna go out with me? And then I would be like, yeah, I do. So then we would be like boyfriend and girlfriend. I literally one day I looked over at Caleb and I asked, so like, what are we? <laughs> and he was like, what do you mean? Like we're dating. I was like, okay, so like we're like officially like we have that title and he goes, I've been telling people that we have that title. And I was like, oh, okay, like, that's fine. 
because me too. But like we never had that like, you're my boyfriend and you're my girlfriend, which I feel like that is how this went. Like there was never like, you're a vampire. Yes, I am a vampire. It was just kind of like alluded to and no, there was no definitive moment that it was like, stated, you know? So like that lack of definitiveness makes me uncomfy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope so. I don't know. I don't even know what this vlog is. It's about twilight. What am I doing? I'm enjoying my time is what I'm doing. I really do. <laughs> I really am enjoying this. Like I'm having a great time reliving this time of my life. Um, and I am reminded, like, I really do like Stephanie Meyer's writing. I like that she has, like, a dark, dry humor. I think a lot of it went over my head when I was a kid, obviously. So, like, I really do appreciate it. And I am enjoying the story, even though it's very problematic in most parts. But, I mean, like, all in all, I'm having fun. And I'm going to insert a little clip of Caleb reading to me because he's never read Twilight. And we were sitting on the couch and, and he goes, Here, let me read you a chapter. <laughs> To the door as soon as I was sure Charlie would be out of sight, Edward was faster. He was waiting in his shiny car, windows down, engine off. I didn't hesitate this time, climbing in the passenger's side quickly, the sooner to see his face. He grinned his crooked smile at me, stopping my breath in my heart. I couldn't imagine how an angel could be any more glorious. There was nothing about him that could be improved upon. How did you sleep? He asked. I wondered if he had any idea how appealing his voice was. Fine. How was your night? Pleasant. His smile was amused. I felt like I was missing an inside joke. Okay, hi. At this point in time, I have finished Twilight. And here I am, I'm going to be wrapping up my thoughts and kind of going over some last minute things. So I had just watched my last update to make sure that I left off where I needed to. And I went on a little rant about how they never had a conversation like outwardly saying the word vampire. But then I was like, wait, wasn't there a scene in the movie, that forest scene, you know, the iconic like, say it out loud. And then she says like, vampire. And he's like, are you afraid? And she's like, no. <laughs> It's iconic, you can't forget it. But is that only in the movies? Like, that, that, I don't think that actually happened in the book. If it did, I must have, like, fallen asleep while I was reading it because I don't remember that being a thing that I just read. I'm looking forward to all the twihards in my comments, like, calling me out and saying that I'm doing a terrible job at this. But seriously, was that only in the movies or is that also in the book and I just missed it? Like, let me know. <laughs> Other than that, I'm flipping through. I've made a couple notes. Um, obviously we got to the iconic baseball scene, you know, with the thunder, and I forgot how clever that was. When they said that it was storming tonight and like, do you want to go play baseball? I was like, oh, like this is that scene. This is the other iconic twilight scene. But then I remembered that they had to play it while it was thunderstorming because they hit the ball so hard that it sounds like thunder so it could blend in with the storm. And realizing that, I was like, oh man, that is brilliant. I love that. And I just like appreciated it so much more reading it the second time. And then obviously the other vampires show up and then like raise havoc and all of that good stuff. And I loved how when Bella was like bringing up her ideas on how they should handle the situation and get her out of there so that she wouldn't, you know, die, Emmett was like continuously surprised at how good Bella's ideas were. He just kept being like, huh. I think we should listen to this chick. <laughs> but reliving all of those like really classic scenes, that was really fun. Um, really the only other thing I have left to say is like I had a lot more fun reading the first half of this book than I did the second half of the book and I thought it would be the other way around. Um, I think that the last half of the book I remember very vividly from the movie and I remember the movie being very like intense and high paced and very dramatic and in the book it wasn't as dramatic like the scene in particular in bella's old like ballet studio with all the mirrors when they were fighting what's his face i can't remember his name i'm flipping through trying to find it but then i saw that in the margin of a random page i wrote does anyone really fall as much as bella does and the answer is no but as i was saying that scene in the mirror room with the ba old ballet studio i remember it being like way more dramatic and way more intense in the movie than it was in the book so like i was was a little underwhelmed at the last half just because I was remembering the movie adaptation. That Hollywood magic, man. That's really the last thing I had. I reread Twilight for the first time since I was a child and it was a time. I really did enjoy it. Um, I think I ended up giving it like three out of five. I think I'm comfortable with a three because 
I really do like Stephanie Meyer's writing. I, I think the story itself is still kind of like, you know, fun. It does have like problematic things in it like we've discussed and many others that we didn't discuss. But I mean, that's that. I'm going to end this now. Uh, thank you if you made it this far. I had a fun time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video. I appreciate your support and as always be kind to one another and happy reading. Mm -hmm.